Residents of Sunset Park waking up this morning still in disbelief over what exactly unfolded in that subway station that sent dozens of people to the hospital. You know, many people who live and work in that area, it's a working class community. They have no choice but to take the train to work this morning, less than 24 hours after that terror unfolded. So joining us this morning is State Assemblywoman Marcella Matenez, who represents Sunset Park, Bay Ridge and Red Hook. Good morning, Assemblywoman. Thanks so much for being with us. Good morning and thank you for having me. So you were actually raised in Sunset Park. You're, you're raising your family there right now and clearly you are familiar with the subway system. Has anything like this happened like before uh, and, and has safety ever been an issue at that particular subway station? Thank you. Um, I moved to Sunset Park when I was five years old and I live a couple of blocks away from the train station and so it's the train that I the, the place where I access all the time. Um, and we've never seen anything like this. This is a predominantly immigrant working class community um, that depends very much on public uh, transportation. And so we've never seen anything uh, close to this at all. But no safety issues there? Or were there safety issues at that station before? I wouldn't say safety issues. I think that we are seeing a change um, in, in what's happening and what this particularly just draws more attention yeah. to the problem of gun safety and the fact that this gun violence is, is a big issue and it's not just impacting our communities. It's not just the state. This is a national issue that we're right. seeing unfolding. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a local story also that has turned into national headlines this morning. You know, surveillance cameras, Assemblywoman, inside that station, we know they were not working properly. Given that the 36th Street station is such a busy one, what kind of safety upgrades would you like to see the city provide in the wake of this incident? Is there anything the assembly could do, an action that can be taken to ensure that it gets done quickly? There's a lot the assembly can do. We know that safety issue is not really um, communities that have uh, Communities that don't have this problem and are also the communities that don't have the largest police presence and the most number of precincts. We know that safety really has to do with other uh, issues and there's certainly stuff the state can do and unfortunately this budget failed to do that. We need to invest and ensure everyone has housing. We need to invest and make sure folks have access to, to health care, mm -hmm. especially after the pandemic. This community this community is hurting a lot. You know, we have a predominantly immigrant community, had no access to health care before the pandemic, and is struggling to survive now. They need uh, they need money for rent. Um, you know, at a time where we can be doing so much at the state level, again, yeah. we're failing. Okay. Uh, we were able to get $2.1 billion for excluded workers. Um, we know 75,000 people have applied and have not been able to access access it because we ran out of funds. That's something we can do is make sure we're giving people money so that they will be investing in our community. Mm -hmm. and, and as you mentioned, I mean, the, the population in that particular neighborhood is mostly made up of immigrants, uh, Latinos, Asians, many of them low income, have low incomes. So what kind of impact is this subway attack having on them, especially when they rely so heavy, heavily on it? This is another trauma that this community is going through. Um, the fact that we are uh, a large immigrant community, you said it, Latino, Asian, we have Arabic, it's a robust uh, community here. And so the fact that we are now uh, coming out of the uh, pandemic, trying to get um, employment, trying to figure out how to pay to do uh, our rent and stuff. Yeah. This is very traumatic because people depend on public transportation. Yeah. And so there's already a trauma that we're dealing with, and this is something else on top of that. So again, there's a lot of people that are going through depression and other mental health issues because they're not getting the services, the basic services that we need, right? Mm -hmm. This is, you know, we have food insecurities, we have, you know, um, uh, food distributions that the community has put together, some with some government funding, but a lot of it is also yeah. with donations. And so, again, we need to invest in our communities to ensure that these things like don't happen. But we're also still 
understanding and, and, and trying to learn what exactly happened. And so right. we still don't have those answers. Yeah, and we're, we're going to be talking to the mayor in about a half an hour from now to get the very latest on the investigation, right? But, you know, Assemblywoman, you're mentioning the subway. Obviously, it's such a lifeline for New Yorkers, right? It is what keeps the city running 24-7. A lot of these residents in your district have no choice but to take a train this specific line to work, 36th Street, a key, for those who don't know, it's a key transfer point, right, for people who travel further into Brooklyn or into Manhattan. So past, the mayor is committed to putting more police in the subway, specifically at this station and along different lines. Past this week, though, where would you like to see police presence in that station? Where was it before and where would you like to see it in the future? I'm concerned that we're trying to solve a problem that we're not 100% identifying what the issue is. Mm. I'm not sure that a, a robust police presence is the answer. Let's not forget Sunset Park was also national news not too many years ago because there was a police officer that took down a pregnant woman who was coming to the defense of her teenage son and wanting to find out why he was being detained. Yeah. And so the police uh, department year after year has been getting additional funding. We're not seeing that trickling down. And so what we're saying is we need to also address the core issues, right? Yeah. And the core issues include housing, healthcare, education, right? Every every summer it seems like we have to fight for the for the the, the summer camps that we get to ensure that our yeah. kids have something to do. You know, we're constantly fighting for after school programs for our kids. And so at a time when we're passing a budget, when we have millions of dollars to spend on a stadium we're continuing to ignore basic needs of communities like mine we just passed health care i'm sorry child care child care is needed in order for people to get back to work however under this budget at the state level child care will be available but not for immigrant children mm -hmm. and so we're seeing again and again the government keep resources from communities that are needed and then put resources into something else and so I am saying we need to invest in our communities. We need to ensure that we are providing for the needy. And so we also need to make sure that they have access to health care. You know, mental health is something that we have seen be an issue grow bigger and bigger and bigger, yet we are not providing the services that are needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so bottom line is you feel like the answer has to start at the very you know, ground level. Grassroots solutions. I mean, why is it that why is it that our community is now being impacted by this strategy tragedy and we're suddenly realizing that the cameras aren't working we just passed the gas tax at the state level now the gas tax is a is a break for people that are driving but that's not an incentive to get more people on the train mm -hmm. and the gas tax that money is actually money that's supposed to go and fund the mca so right. what is it that we're doing i'm out there fighting fighting for, for, resources, for my resources for my community. I can't fight that alone. There's a tragedy that's happening. You want to throw money into a problem, but we're not finding the solution. Yeah. Well, the this cops is have certainly... increased. We've seen them. We've all seen them in the yeah. in, in throughout the New York City. We've seen the cops, the, the police department, year after year, get additional fund, funding and additional money. People are committing petty crimes because they can't get formula for their babies. They can't get diapers. Folks don't have food. We're struggling with rent, uh, money for rent to keep to keep over our roofs. We got a mayor that's suing a huge sweep of homeless people. Where are you putting them? Right, Assemblywoman, this is a conversation that uh, is going to be ongoing for sure. We're just simply out of time right now. Uh, but we will continue this conversation ongoing because these are important issues like you are talking about. But we're simply out of time. And thank you for being on this morning to talk about it. Thank you for having me. All right.